Most electronic differential pressure and pressure transmitters can be identified with one of three fundamental designs. These designs are the force balance type, the motion or position balance type, and the strain gauge type. The Foxborough transmitter is an example of the force balance type. Westinghouse Veritrac transmitters can be classified as motion balance, even though the total motion involved is in the realm of two and one half thousandths of an inch. Statham and Honeywell models are examples of the strain gauge type. Strain gauge fundamentals are included elsewhere in Volume 2 and will not be discussed in this module. However, a specific strain gauge type differential pressure and process pressure transmitter will be studied. Consequently, this module will be concerned with the fundamental design of the motion and force balance types and with a specific example of all three types, including the strain gauge. All of the instructions for the specific strain gauge models will be included in segment number six of this module. The motion and the force balance types to be studied rely on the principle of variable reluctance to convert process signals to milliamp DC signals. Variable reluctance in a magnetic circuit is comparable to variable resistance in an electrical circuit. In the motion balance type transmitter, the process pressure or differential pressure is opposed by a calibrated spring. An armature attached to the stem will facilitate magnetic detection of the armature position caused by any diaphragm movement. In this type transmitter, the total movement for the diaphragm and the armature is approximately 0 0.0025 inches for the complete range measured. An increase in pressure will move the armature upward, thus increasing the voltage at point A in the bridge ABCD. The voltage at point C will be decreased. The changes in voltage at points A and C are the result of the change in reluctance caused by the movement of the armature. The inductance is increased in the upper transformer. The imbalance between A and C causes an increase in the bridge output voltage at B, which is the input to an oscillator amplifier section. The oscillator output is rectified and amplified in the DC amplifier. A feedback circuit can be used to drive the bridge back to balance. At balance, the bridge output voltage at B is nulled. The feedback will rebalance the bridge anywhere within the range of the transmitter. Either voltage or current may be measured in the DC output. Both can be directly related to the process input signal.
the zero and span adjustment may be entirely electrical. However, the range spring capability must be within the limits of the range and span desired. A specific example of the motion balance type of electronic transmitter will be studied later in this segment. Now work exercise number one in your workbook. In the force balance type transmitter, the force created by the differential pressure or pressure working through distance A is balanced by an electrical force working through distance B. Detector armature seeks a relatively fixed position to maintain beam balance. The total armature movement for full span of the transmitter is three or four ten thousandths of an inch. An increase in differential pressure changes the armature position and increases the transformer's secondary voltage input to the oscillator amplifier. The increased DC output causes the force motor to rebalance the beam and bring the armature back to the original position. The process input can be converted to either a voltage or current output value relative to the input. The zero and span adjustments are usually mechanical in the force balance type. In some models, span adjustment also requires an electrical adjustment. The DC output is connected across A and B for minimum, A and C for medium, and A and D for maximum spans. An increase in the number of turns increases the feedback motor force for a given current. Range changes that cannot be achieved with the zero and span adjustments require a stronger measuring device, whether it is a bellows, diaphragm, or capsule. Now work exercise number two in your workbook. Electronic pressure and differential pressure transmitters use two wires for power and signal purposes. They require DC voltage for operation. Currently, 24 volts DC is a popular choice. But some types depend on AC transformers for detecting a measurement change. The AC is generated in the oscillator section. The output span is usually 4 to 20 or 10 to 50 milliamps DC. The 4 to 20 span is the most predominant. Depending on the manufacturer, the loop components, other than the transmitter, may be hooked in series. Or they may be hooked in parallel.
a series system can be compared to a battery and resistor circuit. The resistors represent the loop components. The controllers, many recorders, and other components are actually voltmeters that measure voltage drops across their respective loop resistors. Some recorders in use are current devices and perform like ammeters. The series loop is sensitive to the total loop resistance. When an item is added or subtracted, the total loop resistance is maintained correct by adjusting the variable resistor. The parallel system can also be compared to a battery and resistor circuit, but with only one resistor in the loop. The controllers, alarms, and other components are essentially voltmeters hooked in parallel across the one resistor. This resistor section is commonly called the input module. Loop resistance is not affected by the addition or deletion of components. This is due to the high input impedance of the recorders, controllers, alarms, and other items placed in parallel with the input module. Some input modules are more than a simple precision resistor. The addition of resistance provides for intrinsic safety in the transmitter signal wires by limiting the total amount of current that can flow in the loop should a short develop in the main resistor. This is an intrinsically safe input module. This view shows the additional resistors. In some electronic loops, the input module also serves as a signal conditioner. 4 to 20 or 10 to 50 milliamps input gives 0 to 10 volts output to the various loop receivers. Intrinsically safe means that when the wiring is shorted or grounded, it cannot give a spark hot enough to support combustion in an explosive atmosphere. Many of the electronic transmitters are intrinsically safe. This cannot be assumed. Each installation must be verified. It is important to understand that for the transmitter to be intrinsically safe, all other items in the loop must also be intrinsically safe. Next, we will examine specimens of the preceding types in more detail. Now work exercise number three in your workbook.